Welcome back to another episode of Opinionated Off Topic. Today we got another very special guest with us today. Um, I don't want to botch your last name. How do you pronounce it? Brathwaite. Brathwaite? Yeah. We got Shane Brathwaite with us. Um, he's an Olympian. Thank you for coming on. I'm Thanks, glad, glad you're here. Thanks, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to get to know a little bit about him. Um, see his journey to, to, to being an Olympian athlete and um, learn a little, little about you. Um, I'm here at the co-host Cam. What's How good? y'all What's doing? Good? Hope y'all are doing good. Uh, this is another product of Sacrifice Training, so make sure y'all go check out the podcast we just shot with them recently. But uh, yeah, just kind of would jump into it. Like, who are you today? And kind of uh, where's your story? What's your origin? Um, well, as you guys said, Shane Brathwaite, uh, born in Barbados, born and raised. Um, I came to the U.S. when I was 18, got a full scholarship. I went to Central Arizona College, uh, spent two years there. Um, Transferred to Texas Tech, uh, finished up my two years, and um, after that I was able to go pro, but we could go for, back a little bit further. Uh, I'm the oldest of two. Uh, I have a younger brother. Um, was mainly raised by my, my grandma, my granddad, my mom, and my stepdad. Um, they, I always ran. Um, I started running from uh, about five, but I never trained. I never took the sport as serious as I should. Um, and then um, I got to a point where it was like, I was like 15, 16, and it was like, what are you gonna do next? And um, I had a conversation with one of my cousins, my older cousins, and she was like, you're good at track, why don't you just train? You know, so um, joined the track club, and um, things just kind of took off. Like, I went from not known at all, you know, in the, country, in the island uh, for track to being one of the well-known athletes. Um, my first, so I started in March of 2006, and um, training, and then July that same year, I made my first team for Barbados and won a gold medal. Like, and from then on, I just kind of just stuck with it, and just it just kind of took off from there. That's dope. Yeah, that's dope. What What is life like in Barbados? Like, when oh, you man. when you like went where when you lived there, and then coming to here, yeah, was like, did you what you really expect? Um, I mean, I have family in New York. So uh, growing up, my mom would always take us there for summer vacation. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of had an idea of how like New York was, but um, when I got my scholarship and mm -hmm. I went to Arizona, it was like I, I had in my mind I was like, you know, it's gonna be just like New York. Yeah. So when I got there and, and I touched down and it was in the desert, I was like, this ain't New York. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, but uh, honestly though, like the the people I met there, uh, they had some other Islanders, and. Um, you know, all the, all the athletes, we we gel really well. So my transition wasn't wasn't hard. Like I I didn't have that culture shock or like I really didn't miss home as much. Like I was I, I think I was more excited for that journey. You know, to uh to just get started and just you know just embrace it. Really, I, I guess. Yeah. What, yeah. what? What? Back to the first question. What? What is life like in oh, Barbados? Sure. Um, man, hella laid back. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the island life is it's just so cool, man. Everybody. You know, friendly, laid back, just chilling. Um, but it's just, it's just something you got to kind of experience. Mm -hmm. um, but it's dope, man. Like, whenever I go home, it's just, you know, it just brings back all the memories as you know, as a kid, whatnot. But um, it's just something you really got to experience. How often you go home? Uh, I actually was there back in March. Um, oh, nice. But before that, it was, it was a couple of years because of COVID. Um, but uh, I was there for a week. I went home for my mom on my grandma's birthday. Um, but yeah, it was. I just needed it. You know, it's been. It was two years, and uh, it was a break. Well needed. I got home. I relaxed. Enjoyed the food that I haven't had in a while. So, it was just. It was needed. Ain't nothing like some homemade cooking. I know, right? Uh, what, what, nothing like homemade cooking. Uh, speaking of food, what's like your favorite <clears throat> dish, or like what's like something that you like that's not here, that's there? Oh man. Um, what can I think of? Um, man, there's a few things, man. But um, I would say <laughs> my mom does this. It's called pigtails. It's, it's, it's on. She's it's done on the the grill. Barbecue pigtails. I like that a lot. Um, but other than that, like there's a lot of things that you can I can get over here because there's some Caribbean restaurants. But um, you know it's not it's not the same. It's not like mm -hmm. yeah. mom or grandma's cooking. Yeah, exactly. So, like uh, rice and peas and stewed chicken or like ox stills or or um, yeah, just our national dish is called cuckoo. 
uh, cooking with flying fish. That's really unique, and uh, you can't get it over here. So that's one of the things I would say that is very unique you can't get in the U.S. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, I guess since you grew up on the island and stuff like that, outside of track, um, what – did you do, like, any surfing or any water activities? Like, how? Like how's that – I actually did a little bit of boogie boarding. Okay. I was never good enough to, to stand up on the uh, on the surfboard. But um, other than that, man, not going to lie. As a kid, we were on the beach almost every day, especially during the summer. And um, it was just, that's, that's part of the life. Like, you know, you just go to the beach, hang out with everyone in the neighborhood, you know, just relax, swim out, see the turtles, you know, get on the jet skis. Just all, <laughs> all that was just, was the life growing up, man. That's crazy. It's probably different from here because, like, how big is like I guess technology over there? Because like here we get all the the PlayStations and all that, and like what is all access like that over there versus here? Um, we we have them. Uh, it's just super expensive. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, the cost of living is a little higher, and um, some things like right, I'll give you examples. I'm a big sneakerhead, and like Jays, you get some ones over here for like what one seventy, one eighty. Oh, when you go over there, you're gonna pay like five, five, six hundred. Mm. But the the currency is like two to one. But still, that's that's a lot of money, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So, but we have access to them. It's just it's just way more expensive. Gotcha. Yeah, because yeah. here, I mean, yeah. for some, it's for us. Yeah. Like we would play our sports. I I played baseball, so I'd be mm-hmm. in baseball, but I would also be playing games yeah. all night with my friends because I didn't have to go to school the next morning. Yeah. Just stayed home. So that, yeah. like, that's what like I did during my summers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was kind of the same for us too. Like, uh, I had a when I was younger, I had a Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then as the games keep coming, uh, coming out, my cousin had a uh, Nintendo 64, my best and my favorite system of all time. But um, but like we we had Check. all the systems. We had PS1, PS2. Uh huh. Um, but we like we would play it, but outside was where it was yeah. Where it was. Where was it's just beautiful too. Yeah. Like that water is like super yeah, super clear, clear blue. It was, just, it was just nothing like yeah. that. What's the closest like other country or island? Like what's the nearest one? Um, it would be between. I think Trinidad and like St. Lucia, St. Vincent, those would probably be like maybe like a 20, 25 minute flight. Okay. Yeah. So did yeah. you ever do that like growing up, just like fly in to those other ones or nah, not? We, we, no, nah, we didn't really island hop like that. Okay. It, it was kind of a thing where you was you were too young. Like if you went with your parents or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, like I've, I've been to Trinidad, but for competitions. Um, yeah. I went to St. Vincent for vacation. Um, but other than that, every other Caribbean island I've been to was for like competitions and stuff and stuff. And I guess like, not trying to get off topic, but isn't Rihanna from yeah Barbados? Barbados. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. She like she's our yeah. most famous person. Ever. Yeah, like, she was like yeah. the Manny Pacquiao of <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Barbados. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, transitioning back to track, mm-hmm. I guess when you said when you were about fourteen or fifteen is kind of when you like yeah. started taking it seriously. Yeah. What What was it that like drove you to take it serious besides talking to was it your aunt? My, my cousin. Your cousin. Mm-hmm. Um. I made the love for it. Like, um, I just remember just, we, we were always racing in the neighborhood and whatever, but I remember the 1996 Olympics. Uh, we actually had a guy there uh, from our country, Obadella Thompson. And um, I just remember watching those games and I was like, that's what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be there. Um, so in the neighborhood, we, we would always be racing and I'll be like, I'm, so, I'm so-and-so from this country, blah, blah, blah. So um, that kind of started the love. Like just watching the '96 Olympics. Um, is that the one? Here? Yeah, that's the one in that's Atlanta. Atlanta. Every, yeah. All the merch and stuff. Yeah. Wear, yeah. Um, but that that was that was the one that I just kind of was like, you know, I, I want to do this. I didn't even know that there was a professional track and fields, you know, circuit or anything. I just knew the Olympics, and I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to be in the Olympics. Yeah. So that kind of just blossomed it, and um, like I said, I, I always ran in my school. I was always like the best in my school. But when they brought all the schools from the, on the island together, mm-hmm. I was always like, I make finals sometimes, sometimes never make finals, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but um, yeah, so the love was there. Um, I just needed to take it seriously and started training for it. Yeah. 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 How does, so you got uh, a scholarship yeah. to here. Like, how does that work? Do you just, do you send like for like him or us, I should say, yeah. we just send a film to schools right. of like me pitching because I was a pitcher and him playing DB yeah. and like 
see if they like you or not. They tell you, yeah, we don't like you, or they don't even reply to you, obviously, if they don't like you. Right. So, like, how does that work for y'all? Are they, like, scouts that go out there and watch y'all and recruit y'all, or is it, like, y'all send a film here and, like, try to go to schools here? Actually, yeah. So, um, so we have this this games in the Caribbean, and that's why I've been to all the other islands. It's called Carifta Games. Okay. And uh, um, it's all the Caribbean islands just competing for medals and every event, you know, in track. And um, so I think the age groups goes from – Yes, it's under 17 and under 20. But if you're about, I think, 14 and up, if you hit the standard, you will go under 17. And then if 17 to uh, 18, no, yeah, 17 to 18, you go, no, 17 to 19, you go under 20, right? And um, so we go to those meets and compete against the Caribbean, and they have uh, scouts from different colleges and will not come in. And then, of course, they, they have, you know, stats online. Like, if you run a certain time, you go in the world ranking, uh, schools will see that so if you reach out they'll look you up and see how good you are or whatnot and go from there okay. yeah, so there's no it's no like real like I guess video content you yeah. know what I'm saying? it's just more of a seeing your time but, and, and that I don't know like that track the track recruiting is kind of crazy because like my sister's trying to go right now and then right. when Colin was trying to go mm-hmm. basically you just have to you could be losing races, but if your like time is good or fast, or you can right. improve, like you're right, right there, right. you're gonna get a shot normally. Right. So no, I agree. And yeah. um, some coaches too, when they do see like video content, they they might be like, "All right, I see some potential in this athlete." You might you might not win, but maybe your technique is not right. Mm-hmm. So if I fit that your technique, I can take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. So that's how some video come into play. But um, yeah, I feel like a lot of coaches too recruit on just potential. You know, some athletes are winners. Like, they will win in high school, but the athletes who they see something in them, they'll give them a shot. Okay. So, you got a, you ended up getting a JUCO scholarship? Yeah, I went to JUCO. So, like, did you know what JUCO was before, like, even going to JUCO? Or did you just, like, think it was, like, a four-year college, a big university type thing? Uh, I kind of knew. They kind of explained, like, you know, you're going to be here two years. You got to pass these classes, whatnot, and then you can move on to a four-year school. Um, but for me, I think – um, I was just so ready to just go. Go. <laughs> but uh, leading up to that, I had she took a visit to LSU, and I was mm. like, "This is the school I wanted to get yeah. to." You know what I'm saying? Like, I, after they started recruiting me, I started watching all these videos, mm. watching NCAA's and stuff. Like, I'm like, LSU is the school I want to go to. But, was that when Lolo was there? Uh, I don't think Lolo. No, I think she had already graduated. Um. But Richard Thompson was still there. He's from Trinidad, and he had one silver in the Beijing Olympics in mm-hmm. 08. Um, but, yeah, I, when I took my visit, I think – wait, was, what year was it I took my visit? I think I took my visit in 08, actually. And it was, like, right before he won the medal at the, mm-hmm. the Olympics. No, it was after because I, I visited in October. Yeah, that's what it was. So, uh, but, yeah, just going to see him on my visit and seeing the school. I went to a game, football game, never – like, never really watched football. Uh-huh. I knew what football was, but rules yeah. and stuff like that. I went to Georgia, LSU. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was just crazy. Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting on the, the student section. I'm looking in the stands, and I'm like, yo, this is dope. Like, yeah. I so Stafford was there, I think. Stafford? Yeah, I think yeah. he was there in a way. Yeah, he was. Stafford and A.J. Probably, Green? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, they were. They beat LSU. <laughs> yeah, they were good. And, um, but, yeah, after that, I was just like, that's where I want to go. But um, I went to Juco. Things didn't work out with it. I, how I wanted it to at LSU, but you know, I ended up at Texas Tech and I made the best of it. I thought it it still was a, a good decision for me. Yeah. Uh, what what, was, what junior college did you go to again? Central Arizona. Okay. Where where at in Arizona is that? Uh, Coolidge. Coolidge. Of What's nowhere. the closest city uh, that is to? It's like honestly in the middle of Phoenix or no Tempe and Tucson. So like <laughs> right behind the school is like just like two mountains. And it was just like nothing. When you look off in the distance, you just seen dirt roads, and it was just like a typical junior nowhere. college, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so that's, that's how like junior colleges are, just in the middle. Like of they're nowhere. all. They, I, I feel it's definitely strategic. I feel like just yeah. a limit. Because I mean, I feel like yeah, it gets you from distract. Because you, mm-hmm. you go there for the sport. You don't really right. go there for yeah. school. You go to the get better. Exactly. Um, yeah. For like baseball players, some of them go there to. Because mm-hmm. in baseball, I don't know how it is in track. Because I know in football, you have to stay at least three years until you're 21. Mm-hmm. Um, and baseball is the same way, but um, if you go to a junior college for baseball, right. you can go to the draft after your first year. Oh, but if dope. you go to D one or D or any divisions, um, you have to stay three years. Oh, yeah, I remember Central had a pretty good team. Like when I was there, yeah, like they had a decent baseball team. 
Oh, I didn't know that. That's, yeah. That's, 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 that's yeah. Um, so, like, a lot of the high talented people will go to Juco if they don't like, like, their draft pick. Right. And then they'll, like, try to up their stats um, at Juco and then get drafted. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely go for two and then um, and transfer. Uh, how was the level uh, when you first, like, went to the U.S. and went to, went to uh, junior college? How was that level from what you were used to? Um back home i'll say it was some some events were about the same okay um because our division i remember we just dominated it yeah um and um but i think our training our group we had we had some talented kids so we just kind of push each other um at practice and whatnot so we all end up improving and um pretty much everyone uh from the from the squad got some pretty good offers and went to some pretty big name um division one schools so y'all were good Mm -hmm. Judd, what is, I guess, y'all's big tournament? What is that called? Uh, for, for junior college? Uh, it's NJCCA championships. Yeah. 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 And then we compete against our, like other junior colleges uh, within the U.S. Not the California ones because I think they have their own yeah. uh, conference. They have that one big school, Mount Sac or whatever. Actually, I'm right Mount, at Mount Sac. This really? Week. Yeah. I knew yeah. some dudes that played there. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah. That school is huge. Yeah. 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 It's definitely – but yeah, it was it was dope. I think once you got to nationals, though, that's when the competition kind of kind of up. Cause kids like my two years, these kids were running like like some world class times. Cause two guys, or three of them, went pro actually mm -hmm. after, after JUCO. They didn't even go to Division One. They just went pro. Uh, one guy was from Barbados. He went. Uh, he ran the same event, and this other guy was from like Panama or something like that. And he went on to they went on to winning gold at World Championships and silver. Behind you, same boat. Mm. So like during my Damn. time there, that's times good. Were like like crazy. Yeah, there were, there were some fast guys. Man. Yeah. yeah. What was the competition like going from JUCO to Tech? Oh, from like that to like deep from JUCO to D one. Not it leveled up because I went from being the number one guy at, at Central to like when I got to Tech, I was maybe like number four, I believe, and like I was just like dang. I got I to step my, my game up. And then it made me work harder till my senior year. I was the number one guy, you know. So um, it definitely – the Big 12 was definitely tougher than anything I had uh, at base. Um, but, yeah, it definitely was a lot tougher than Juco. Yeah. What, were you at – you – A&M was already gone, right, when you went uh -huh. to Tech? No, they're, they're still there? there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And they, they were dominant. Yeah, because they're, like, they're known, like, one of the best trash yeah. schools, right? Yeah, they are one of the yeah. best trash schools, yeah. We yeah, – well, we, I say, we – but Texas – they just won a lot of the, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. indoor. They yeah. just won a lot of indoor competitions. Yeah, they won indoor national. And then yeah. Tech won the Natty and track a couple of years ago. Yeah, nineteen. Yeah, nineteen. Yeah, yeah. I hate it because, like, I mean, I'm happy for them, of course. But yeah. When we when, when I leave, you know, that type of stuff. They got nicer facilities and mm -hmm. a better team and whatnot. And but yeah, they, they really did their thing. That do you day. think you you're a product of that though? Like them getting better stuff. Like, do you think you're one of the guys that like helped them get better facilities? I'm, I'm sure it plays a part um, because, like, like I said, when, when I was there, man, we had some some really fast guys. Yeah. Um, we had Gil Robertson at 400. He was man, he was a beast. He ran 44 seconds. Uh, wow. We had Omo Sagi. He ran like 13.2 in the 110s. <laughs> um, we had Jamel Mason from uh, Puerto Rico, 48 seconds in the 400 hurdles. Uh, so like we had we had some, some fast yeah. guys. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? We just um, it just didn't come together for us. We didn't have. I think we had we had quality over quantity mm -hmm. i'll say at that time mm -hmm. um but um a lot of schools now to win nationals man you got to have some, some some dogs and you got to have some numbers to to get some points cause, yeah yeah at this point is it more of like i guess y'all just raw speed or y'all about the same it's technique that sets y'all apart or is it a little bit of both like some guys have more speed in the technique i mean some guys have more speed cause, you know just yeah. just genetically you know yeah um but i think technique plays a big part too though yeah um Especially in my event, like you could be, I could be faster than, for example, I could be faster than you in the 100 meters, but you might be more technical in the race that you could still beat me. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of events come down to the little, little fine tuning things and little technical things. That's cool. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. What time are we at? Uh, let me see. I said an alarm or time. We have eight minutes. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, so from, from tech mm -hmm. did you 
was it kind of like how, how does it work to go pro because like with other sports obviously they have a draft does track have a draft or is it more of just like you like announce you go to races yeah. do you have to win a certain amount of because that's how it is in boxing you have to win a certain amount of like yeah. amateur yeah. fights to be considered yeah. a pro and you gotta like get your gold gloves yeah and like all that stuff and track do you just declare pro and you're pro or is it like a, you have to win a few races to um, be a pro it really just like you go to nationals and you do well and the agent that sees you and he's like okay you have or just say you win nationals automatically some some events if you run really fast like you're just gonna have an agent this is like automatic but for me it was uh i took the initiative to actually approach an agent so um the guy i mentioned ryan brathwaite who won world champs we were at our trials to make the olympic games in 2012 and um I just saw the agent. The agent was with him, and I was like, I ran a fast time. I was like, hey, you know, what's up? Can we chop it up real quick? We exchanged numbers. And then I believe I went to a race in Port, um, Mexico uh, a couple weeks later, and I ran faster than I did in college. And I hit him up, and he mm -hmm. was like, all right, we could work with that. Yeah. And it just kind of worked. It just went from there. Like, I wasn't one of the athletes that the agent kind of approached me. I was like, I'm just, shoot, you know what I'm saying? Let's yeah. shoot my shot and just see what happens. You see your agent today? Mm -hmm. That's cool. To this day. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so how's do you train daily? Or like how does that like you're just your yes. daily your daily training your diet your rest and all that like how yes. does how does that how do you go about that? Okay, so I do weights three times a week Monday Wednesday Friday. Um, I run five days, um, but that's more so like in the fall. Mm -hmm. But as uh, the the season comes around, we kind of taper back because you want to be a little bit fresher to compete at a higher level. Um, as far as diet, I don't have like a nutritionist or anything, but, but I don't eat bad as well. Like I'm not eating fast food every day or anything like that I'll cook, you know, and I'll try to cook as good as possible, like healthy as possible. I'll say, um, what was the other thing? It was, um, diet. And, and then just resting, like just resting. Oh yeah. yeah, man. I just try to go to bed as early as I can and just rest up. Uh, treatment though. I, I take my treatment seriously. Like, yeah. I try to get massages every maybe two, three times a week. I do cryo. Um, I have my own Normatec, uh compression boots. And um, yeah, I just try to just do what I need to do to be better the next day. You go better. to the cryo at? Yeah, I yeah, do. Uh, yeah, Percy. Yeah, Percy. Yeah, Percy. Yeah. 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 yeah, He's known him for a long time, too. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, 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 for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, go ahead. I guess, like, doing like, the cryo and, like, taking care of yourself, doing all the rehabbing, have you have any, like, lingering injuries or have you had any major injuries that have impacted your track career? Nah, let me just knock on wood for that. Yeah, uh, I've never too. had a, a major injury. All my injuries were slight strains, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. I've never broken a bone, uh, anything like that. So I'm, I've also yeah. been blessed for that. Yeah, for sure. Because I know have those kind of injuries. Because I know track is a, like a taxing sport because I, yeah. like, I was doing some research on you and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, he's like you're 32, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, track the prime is like very short like yeah. you like are in it and then it's like yeah you're kind of out it's like you know? you're saying bold he was considered old right actually man i think i think the age kind of changed more recent the last couple of years because back in the day they were like high high 20s low 30s yeah you're still in your prime it's only more recent that these uh the college kids have been just like just turning it up you know but um there's a lot of guys who ran fast in my event Alan Johnson, I didn't want to say Alan Johnson ran fast at like 36, 37, like run uh, like 13 oh, or, or sub 13 or something like that at that age. And I'm just like, as long as you take care of your body, man, I feel like. That's what I feel like. You know, you, yeah. can, you can go as long I mean, as possible. Look at Tom Brady. Yeah. Kobe? No, Kobe? 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 I mean, yeah, because he was, you know what, 40-something when he started yeah. getting hurt? Yeah. Yeah. LeBron. I'm yeah. sure um, Russell Wilson's going to be like that. Yeah. 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 Just play forever. Yeah. yeah. Just, I yeah. think it just depends on, you know, and being lucky. Or, no, I wouldn't say lucky, but just. Not having like a major major injury, you know what I'm saying? So I feel it just depends on the athlete. How often do y'all run? Like have like meets? Um, it just depends. So sometimes you sometimes some athletes plan it out strategic. Um, but uh, as of recent, I have ran every weekend for the last three weeks, uh, just trying to get my outdoors going. And actually, I haven't done my event yet. This weekend will be my first weekend uh, doing the event. I just been doing like some 100s, 200s okay. uh, relays just to get. To get my speed going, you know what I'm saying, get my legs turned over. So when I do go to my event, it's going to be easier, you know. So, um, but, yeah, it really just depends on, on the athlete and how they want to plan out their season. But the longest I've ran um, was, like, sec the second week of September. So it could, it could get it could get pretty long. And uh, especially when we go to Europe, we could probably run three, three times a week. 
So it gets tough when you when you yeah, go. So over you there. definitely don't want any anything to happen to your body because yeah, exactly. you miss out on races, and exactly. then when you miss out on races, you, you lose form, money, like, <laughs> m- money yeah. then um, um, just I guess technique because like um, going back to baseball, like the fielders field every single like it's just they just right. got to field every just day, reps. and I'm sure yeah, sure yeah. in yeah. track it's the same thing. Right. Yeah. yeah definitely. So with the training and resting and all that like how how did you and, and um bryson or e how'd y'all connect like from tech did he see you at tech or did you just like how'd you even come to austin okay so quick um after tech i moved to houston uh, i was working with this lady andrea blackett um she's also from barbados great hurdler uh one of the best athletes we've ever had but um we kind of connected um we worked for a little while um maybe four three four seasons but um, I had, you know, great times with her. I accomplished a lot with her. We, we had a great chemistry. Um, but she got a good job offer to UCLA. And um, it was not, you know, smart for me to move to California. Um, so I hit up a coach down here uh, at the time, Matt Cain. Um, worked with him for two years. Um, that ended. And then the coach I'm with now, D2, Daryl Woodson, when I started working with him, he was like, hey, I got some contacts. You know, I got some strength coaches. Go check them out. Uh, Bryson was the first one I went to the facility. And uh, just talking to him, I was just like, yeah, I don't need to see the other guys. Like, that was it. And then it just kind of blossomed, man. And then um, just working with him just been just been great. And I could see all the improvements in my strength, you know, speed, you know, my explosiveness. Like, it just it just works. And it's just – they just be, really became family. But um, it's just been just – a great great relationship and great working environment since then the podcast we did um that was the first time i met them yeah and they they make you feel yeah. like family as soon as you walk in the door and it's yeah. very welcoming and it's yeah. very easy to talk to them and they're very outgoing and laid back and yeah. it, it's definitely like a, a dope place to be at and yeah, a dope definitely, connection definitely is a vibe man how long have y'all been training together uh this is my third season it would have been fourth but covid messed things up but uh four years now Four years but, now. Um, nah, man, it's just it's just been great, man. Bryson, and them, they're dope. You train with both of them? No, just Bryson. Just Bryson. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, you know, of course, he's always yeah, there. He's yeah, exactly. Up, so yeah, always be chopping it up. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, he cracks me up. He was yeah, cracking me up. He's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah all dope, man. Yeah. Um, I guess what with training and stuff like that, what was the hardest uh thing you had to do, like that you weren't comfortable with when it came to like training and stuff like that? Oh man, that transition to track. Honestly, nothing. Cause once I started, man, it was just like this is what I wanted. Yeah. And even in high school, like once I started training, mm-hmm. I was even doing stuff on my own. Like I wake up in the morning and just like go for long runs, do some drills, stuff like that. And then in the evening, I go to my my track club. You know. So once that kind of started, my that mentality started. Everything was easy for me. Don't matter. I can go from one coach to another, and something be different. We lift now, Bryson. We lift first, run after. In the past, I would run first, lift after. But for me, it's like when I when I change uh, coaches or when I start a new program, I'm full. I'm I buy into it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm full invested. I'm not going to half-ass it. I'm not. Uh, Question. I'm not gonna, yeah. No, you're good. You're good. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not going to yeah. be yeah. like, hey, my old coach did this. Let me do. Can I can I do that? Yeah. Not because if you if you do that, you're not you're not going to see the full results that you know yeah. you're getting. I mean, from the uh, from the program. So. Uh, Every every coach I've had, every school I've been to, I buy into the program, and I'm just like, this is what we, you know, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna follow it, unless I just it's not working, and that's what kind of happened with the one coach um, when I first moved to Austin. Second year, first year went great. Second year wasn't going well, and I was kind of like, hey, can we tweak some things, you know? And um, but other than that, I'm usually like, I buy into the program. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. Is uh, hurdle training hard? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, man. It's it's tough. It's real technical, um, and the faster you get, the faster the hurdles come up. Like, and it's a blink of an eye, and, and it's there. So it's well, like before you get into that, I don't think we said it. What do you run? The one ten meter hurdles. One ten meter hurdles. That's it. Yes, sir. That's it. Yep. Okay. Uh, occasionally, like I said, I'll do the one hundred meters, two hundred for like practice, and for Barbados, I also do the four by one. You know, four by one relay. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the the hurdle training and uh, yeah. yeah, 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 it's tough, man. Um, especially the in between when you like I said when you get faster, you in between them hurdles and they're like forty two inches high. 
So um, the reaction is just like you really have no time. So the muscle memory, once you get it, it becomes a little bit easier as far as the muscle memory. But um, like I said, other little aspects, you get faster, you become more technical. The wind become be behind your back. It gets is a little it's a little tricky, but yeah, it's a it's a technical sport. Do you do you all like train for all of that? So like, do you mm-hmm. if it's windy outside, do you go out and do hurdle stuff just to like get used to it? Yeah, actually, today I had I had some hurdles today. I had some starts, and I like it because I'm like, you never know what you you're gonna get when you get to a competition. You know, Bermuda's supposed to be windy, so my coach was like, line it up. And I was like, yeah. easy peasy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you gotta you gotta train yourself to get used to you know. Whatever's gonna happen in the, in the meet, you know, yeah. it's gonna rain, it's gonna be windy, you know. So that's just that's my mindset towards stuff. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, dope. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Um, so before we started, yeah, you have a meet this weekend, mm-hmm. in, in in the uh, Bermuda. Bermuda. Mm-hmm. Do you just sign up for it? Do you get invited to it? Like, how does how does that? Is it like recruited? How does it work? Mm-mm, agent. So agent he uh the agents look for meets and whatnot and um and reach out to the meet directors and you know they're like okay yeah we want to have such and such and then they'll pay for um your travel and then uh accommodation nice yeah no, then you, of course win prize money if you yeah. do well so basically like you being at these meets is like beneficial for you right or for them because like your name's there so like they're right. like oh they had shane at this meet right it, like makes them look good in a right. sense it's good for exactly parties, got you, know? you. And, and a lot of times they stack these races with the biggest the biggest names the best of the best so every every track meet i've been to man is just like professional wise it's like you're not just going to be the, the the most dominant one like any it's any given day mm-hmm. you know uh i could win today somebody else went tomorrow it's like it's rare that you see an athlete like be just dominant yeah, you know what I'm saying? It happens. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But track sometimes, man, anything can happen, especially in my event. You know, you could fall. You could clip a hurdle. You know what I'm saying? Anything can happen. So Have you fell before? Twice. I was going to uh, ask that. Yeah. The Olympics, 2012 Olympics, and uh, at an indoor meet at Texas A&M. But both the same year. But uh, <laughs> but the wow. Olympics was the hardest one, man. Yeah. Man. It, well, I was going to say, it has to suck because like, that's your one shot. Yeah. That's your one race. Yeah. There's no 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 nothing. Doors, yeah, you know? no, that's your one race. And the worst part of, about it, it happened the very first round. <laughs> so they have the first round, the semifinals, the finals. Mm-hmm. First round. I was first hurdle. I was out. Like uh, the picture's online, like uh, flat on my face. But uh you know, it happened. Um I was able to to bounce back. I won a, a few medals at other meets. I made world championship finals a few times. Uh, and then last year Olympics, same shit happened. I didn't fall, but I clipped the hurdle, didn't get out the first round. Mm. So I got a little bad juju with the Olympics right now, but I got, I'm going to change that in, in two years. Oh, you yeah. got it. But, um, but as far as like world champs, I've made the finals uh, 2017, 20, 2019. Uh, like I said, won a few medals, you know, leading up to that. So I redeemed myself in a sense, but the Olympics, I need to I need to get past that first round. What do you think it is? Do you think it's just anything or is it just like unfortunate? I would say it's been unfortunate because that 2012 year, I was in pretty good shape. Um, I was ready. I was probably too ready because I got to the hurdle too fast mm-hmm. and just, just kind of hit it a weird way. Um, last year, I would say was a little more unfortunate because came off the COVID year. Uh, I probably re- relaxed a little bit too much COVID. I mean, I worked <laughs> out, but it wasn't the same. You know, we didn't have no competitions. So I feel like that broke my rhythm. Because I had a really good 2019, mm-hmm. uh, nothing in 2020, no competitions or anything, and then trying to get back to it in 2021. And um, it was hard for me to find that rhythm. Like, I, I would have one race run pretty well, and then the next race, everything just seemed off. And with hurdles, man, it's a rhythm race. Like I said, you could be faster foot speed-wise, but if I'm more technical, I'll beat you all day. You know what I'm saying? But um, my rhythm was just way off. Um, and... Um, Got to the games and training was going well before the games and I was just like you know what I'm gonna get past the first round and good race was going I was closing really well I was like in second or third when I clipped the hurdle but I hit hurdle six so hard and then I hit another one and then I was out of it after that but um it is what it is short term memory with sports yeah yeah you have to yeah you got to you have to if you can't 
if you can't get past that, you have that mental block forever. Yeah. You know? And then it's just so. next race is just there with you. Like, Damn, I hope I don't hit this hurdle. I hope I don't hit this hurdle. Exactly. Boop, you hit it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Are the um are the uh the trial meets and all that? Are they are they crazy? Are they fun? The trial, the tryouts. Oh no! Like when you like the one you're going to in Barbados. Oh, you mean Bermuda? Uh, I mean yeah, Bermuda. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Those meets. I would say, man, Europe. Europe is is where is really hype. Um, I mean, I've been to meets in Europe, man, and kids coming up for autographs. Um, you know, I'm like, y'all know me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I've had. I remember one meet. This is in 2015 in uh, Switzerland. Uh, I'm in the room just chilling, and I heard a knock on the door, and I was like, what the hell? So then the front desk, desk lady gave me a, like an envelope, and I'm like, all right, now this is strange. I open the envelope. There's a picture of me, like several pictures on this on like paper, uh, pieces of paper, and the person wants me to sign all of them and send them back to them. Like I've never had experience in anything yeah. like that, like this side of the world. You know what I'm saying? So like over in Europe, there are big fans. How did that feel? That I mean, was dope, man. Yeah. I was 25 at the time, so I was like, yeah, this is dope. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so like. I feel like in Europe they're just so big fans of the sport. You go to I've been to trap meets where there are guys just standing outside the hotel, like, is this you? Is this you? Like can't even speak English. Yeah. You know, with your picture, a picture you've never mm-hmm. seen before. And I'm like, How do you get that? You know what I'm saying? Like and they just want your sig- their signature or take a picture with you. You know, so they were really big fans of the sport and um yeah, just experiencing that man is just is just dope. So would that be like, I guess, Europe, is that your favorite place to run? Yeah. Or what was that? Was that your favorite place to run? Like, do you have a specific like oh, event or spot that was your, is your favorite? Oh, my favorite? Been your favorite? Um, you know what? I don't have a, a favorite. I'll say uh, I've done well at a few, uh, but one of the cities that I love the most is Lucerne, Switzerland. Uh, I, I think I've been there pretty much every year I've been pro, um, and it's a beautiful city. It's dope. Um, you can see like that the mountains and stuff in the background. The city is a small city. You walk through. There's a big river through the city. So it's pretty or whatever, but um, yeah, man, like the competition over there is crazy. The stands, everybody just go crazy. So that's the fun part of it. Um, the buzz, the Caribbean also has a little bit of buzz too. Uh, like Bermuda might be might be pretty pretty popular. And a lot of people might be there, um, but I, I think Europe is next level. Next yeah. Level yeah. 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 What is for uh, going back to what you said earlier? Take it, pay. What is placement money? Like, is it like one through ten, one through five, one it's through three? Basically. Some, yeah. some races are one through five, some one through eight, because it, it's eight lanes in a, on the track. Um, so yeah, it just really depends. Some some races they got like different tiers uh, of race. They got like gold meets, they got diamond leagues, they got silver, bronze. Mm-hmm. So it just it really depends um, on those. And sometimes you go to meets, you only the top three get paid. <laughs> so it makes it a little tougher. You're in diamond. Are correct? you in the diamond league? Or? Nah, it just it just depends. Like it okay. just depends what your agent gets you in. Got I've been you. to a few diamond leagues. I've been to gold. The meet me in Bermuda is a gold meet. Okay. So um, like I like I said, it just depends on what gotcha. your agent can get for you, and also goes on performance. Mm-hmm. So if you're like top eight in the world, you're probably guaranteed to be diamond league like every race. You know what I'm saying? So it just it just kind of goes off that. So that that's the tricky part about it. So, so your goal is to like be in diamond. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Because that's, that's where all the money's at. That's exactly. The money's at. Yeah. And the exposure. Like, yeah. The Diamond Leagues are like, the, you see the stands and stuff. Packed. Crazy. Yeah. Because I was uh, watching like an NBC sports they show, like a lot of like races, and I was watching uh, Sydney McLaughlin. Like she's mm-hmm. in the Diamond League yeah. and stuff. So yeah, 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 that's yeah, pretty yeah. dope. Yeah. Diamond Leagues the next level. Yeah. From, well, from like diamond to gold, first place, what's the difference in money? Uh, diamond League. Ten thousand for first place. Goal varies between like maybe like thirty five hundred to like five thousand maybe in that in that range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, So that's 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 the that's the difference. And then diamond league, well the diamond leagues and the gold meets. If you have a contract, you probably get bonuses for top three. Um, so that kind of helps a little bit better, a little more incentive to to place top three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have any like endorsement deals or have you had endorsement deals in the past? Yeah, I had. Um, I was actually sponsored with Adidas up until COVID. <laughs> uh, ruins know, everything. Run. Yeah, it ruins everything. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I'm currently not sponsored, so I'm wearing whatever I want. So you might see me in <laughs> Adidas bodysuit and some Nike spikes. <laughs> how does so, uh, how does that feel? Like it's just freely. Uh, yeah, it's a little different um, because you don't have that steady. Um, base pay Mm -hmm. so it's a little different you got to work a little bit harder place a little bit better in all your races so uh that's the only thing but that freedom 
I mean, it's, it's cool or whatever. I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather the money. But um, Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's cool right now. I mean, I just got to go out there and just run run the times. And, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, get Good. back to deal or something. You know? Yeah. So, nothing to it. What, uh, so what, what, what is the Olympic life like? Like we, as just spectators, we just hear stories that is crazy yeah. and, um, condoms everywhere and <laughs> all this stuff. Like what, 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 like, what is it like? Is it, is, oh, it, is it, is it a, is it a fun time? Yeah. Um, Tokyo wasn't as fun because, because of COVID. Yeah. We really couldn't do much. We had mm-hmm. to get tested for, for COVID every day. So you were really like stuck with your your teammates uh-huh. and, and whatnot for that whole time i mean the village was still dope yeah the food was good you know just being in tokyo that's the place i want to go back to because tokyo was just looking at it dope city yeah that's where i want to visit yeah um the most london, london. uh me as a 22 year old man <laughs> it was it was just amazing man london like 22 i'm i'm in the i'm in the village seeing kobe kd serena bolt you know what i'm saying like yeah that's people crazy. Used to on tv growing up you know what I'm saying? So that that was dope. Um, you start, you got to meet a lot of people, just k- kind of kicking it. It was fun. They had game rooms. They had McDonald's in the uh, cafeteria. Like, of course. Like, it was, of course. Yeah, it was, it, it was just a dope experience, man. And just at that time, and I think it never, it didn't hit me while I was there. Kind of hit me after. Like, I was there the whole time, and I was like, you know, just kind of enjoying it. Like, I really should have been, can I take a picture with you? Like, you know, all the big names mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. But, um. Yeah, I, I think for me, my, my mindset, uh, going to all these championships, Olympics, if I don't do well. Does it mean anything? Yeah. 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 yeah not, not, it doesn't, I won't say it doesn't mean anything. It means a lot. But for me, it's like I'm not, I'm not satisfied. Yeah. You know? So if I don't medal, if I don't make the finals, if I don't, you know what I'm saying, run a fast time, run, run a personal best, I'm not satisfied. And I think that's one of the things that just keep me going, you know, till, till I get – I, the, and I, I tell people the only thing I'm, I think I'm missing is uh, either world championship or Olympic medal. I got all the other medals: Pan American Games, Commonwealth Games, CSC Games, NACAC Games. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got them for Barbados. You know what I'm saying? I just think those two, either one of that's the only thing I'm missing right now. And if I, if, you know, once I get one, you know, I feel like I, I'm satisfied with the, the sport. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if I don't, you know. I could honestly say I gave my best. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. So either way, um, but I'm, I'm gonna end up with that medal. Though. Yeah. Have yeah. you? Uh, what's the? I guess getting to the Olympics and like Olympic trials. Like mm-hmm. I watch it all the time. Where it's yeah. held at the Nike compound in Oregon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how hard is it in in uh, Barbados to to do to qualify? It's not, it's not hard. Nah, you just basically you just hit the time, hit the qualifying time, and you're going. You know, um, we don't have to. The debt, you know, the other countries have yeah. like the U.S. The U.S. is ridiculous. Their trials is like the Olympics. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, yeah, if if you make the Olympic, the U.S. Olympic finals, like the time you run can possibly possibly get a medal. You just got to duplicate it. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. that, the U.S. and Jamaica, those countries, like if you win your trials, pretty sure if you just duplicate that, you can win a medal. You know, but uh, our our trials are, are pretty easy. Um, we got to one point though, we had three guys in the hurdles. That's the most we ever had. Last Olympics, I was the only hurdler, you know. So really, it's just at this point, it's just like kind of hitting the time, and you're pretty much guaranteed to go. How did that feel? I mean, it feels good, but like being like you're the only one to like make it out of your country, represent your country. Uh, I was the only one in the hurdles. We had, we yeah. had other athletes, but um, it gets boring a little bit because um, yeah, because like, you have nobody to like it. talk to, I guess. Yeah, I mean, like the training wise, like 2012, we had three guys in the hurdles, and just leading up to the games, we were training each other and just like pushing. Yeah. And that's why I think I was too excited in 2012 when I hit that hurdle because I was like, okay, I'm ready. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that, I had that mentality. But, um, nah, I, I wish we had the numbers, man. Like, the more numbers you get, the more exposure the country gets, and it just looks better. You know what I'm saying? So, but we're going to get to that to that point again. You know, yeah. I feel like we got some talent, a lot of talent. We actually got a guy at UT, uh, Jonathan Jones. He helped contribute uh, to that to that winning team indoors. And okay. dude just split 43-4. On a four, on a four by four, like he opened at his uh, four hundred forty five oh seven, and mm-hmm. he was one forty five in the in the eight hundred. So, like, boys, a boys a beast. So we got the talent, and um, we just need to just keep keep pushing that envelope, and yeah. you know something's going to break through. 
Yeah. What does it mean for you to run for Barbados? Man, everything. Like I said, just watching the Olympics in, in 96 and um, just saying, like, I want to do that and just actually doing it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I've, I'm living my dream, you know. Um, and it's been an honor, and I've been blessed to say I just represent my country. And every time I put those colors on, blue and yellow, that's why if I don't do well, like, I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not happy, I'm not satisfied, because I'm like, I'm just trying to rep it to the fullest and make myself proud, make my family proud, make my country proud, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 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 That's crazy yeah. that have like your whole, like a whole country just like yeah. rooting you on. Yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah. I know you can like feel it when yeah. you're there. No, you know, definitely, like, man, especially on social media. Like, when you make it to the finals in round, like 2017 was my first uh, world championship uh, finals. And my semifinals, I won my semifinals and in the season's best. And to just the love, like going into the final, I'm seeing people reposting me, following me, like, like all that kind of stuff. It was just, nah, man, it's a, it's a different level of feeling. So, yeah. What does it What does it mean to be an Olympian? Like, how, do you ever, when you were running track growing up, like, yeah. obviously envisioned it, but like, yeah. when you actually like, damn, I'm an Olympian. Like, what was that like? I like I said, I feel like for me, because I haven't done well at the Olympics yet. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not moved by it. It's a cool title to have. Like a lot of people can't say they've been to the Olympics. You know, I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to downplay it, but I think for me, because I haven't done well at the Olympics, me personally, I'm not like satisfied yet. You know, um, until I can say I made the finals, you know, or get on that podium, then I'll be like, all right, yeah. you know, I feel you know accomplished. Um, but don't get me wrong, like it's it's a dope accomplishment. You know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm not going to downplay it at all, but. Yeah, I gotta do something with it. I just yeah. can't, just can't have that title, not like a medal or finalist to put behind it. You know. Do y'all get money for getting a from their country for getting a uh, medal? Yeah, usually, yeah. usually they 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 do something for you. They do something nice for you, especially a small country like Barbados. Like, we got one medalist ever, bronze medalist, Obadelli Thompson. Mentioned him earlier, and um, when he won, the island just went crazy. People singing songs about him. He's in the, his name is in the song, and you know, there's just they all his this stuff for him. So. Um. Yeah, man. That's 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 the goal. Cause they they do stuff for you. You know. They yeah. Take care of you, yeah. You know? That's dope. Yeah. I can only imagine what a yeah. like for me yeah. baseball like being on the team USA baseball team. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be crazy. Dope. Yeah. Dope. Insane. Yeah. yeah. Um. But what what uh, has been like? I guess your your fastest time. Like what what for this next. For Bermuda, mm -hmm. is that like an Olympic race, like to get like a qualifier for the Olympics? Well, more so for the World Championships. For the World Championships. The Olympics, you can you can qualify a year out, and the Olympics are in 24 um, in Paris. But this year, the World Championships in Oregon, Eugene, the same Nike. Um, um, so, yeah, so if I, not if, but, you know, when, mm -hmm. um, run the time, I can go to Eugene, Oregon for, okay. uh, for World Championships. Okay. And what what has been your your fastest time that you run? Uh, this year or just in, in general? general? Uh, thirteen twenty one. Thirteen twenty one. And yeah. this year? No, I haven't ran the hurdles. What yet. was your fastest this year? Uh, I haven't ran the hurdles. Oh, yet. you haven't ran the hurdles. Yet. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Yeah, I ran thirteen twenty one in uh at the Pan American Games in Toronto, twenty fifteen. Yeah, so I'm trying to get back to that level. Training's been going good. I'm stronger. You know, I just need to just have that one race to you know start that spark and just take that rhythm and go from there. And then Bermuda will be your first hurdle run, mm -hmm. and then the next weekend after that, yeah, hurdles as well. So this, yeah, yeah, all the races I did, did the last couple of weeks were just like practice reps and stuff just to get my hurdles ready. So from here on out, everything is going to be hurdles from this from this coming weekend for the rest of the year. Just all hurdles. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. That's Besides that. hurdles, what is your favorite race? Like to at least to spectate. Uh, as a kid, I wanted to be a sprinter, so I wanted to like the one hundred, two hundred. Yeah, yeah, those were. I mean, of course, I think every every kid who runs or watch track want to be a sprinter. Yeah, you know, but it's not you know it's not for everyone. I, I yeah. guess talking about that, what what made you get into doing hurdles? Oh man, so quick back story. Uh, so when I started training, that that first meet I, yeah. I won that medal for Barbados. I actually did it in the multis um, because my coaches were like, "These other guys are faster than you um, to go to this meet," and we were like. You're good at, because at school, I did everything. I did the long jump, the high jump, because I was like, I just wanted to just do it. Yeah. And um, the coach was like, just try to multi. And I did it, hit the standard, and then I was a multi-athlete 
for um, two years, three years. And then I won World Youth Championships uh, at 17. Um, it's an under 18 meet. Um, but uh, I did that. And then the year after, it goes from eight events, our Tathlon, to the Decathlon. And we don't have pole vault like that yeah. at home. And um, it was hard for me to transition because I had no coaches to teach me the pole vault mm-hmm. and whatnot. So, um, but I always did the hurdles because the hurdles were in the multi. Mm-hmm. And um, so I tried out for World Juniors. They make the team. And another coach was like, hey, just try to form the hurdles so you can try to make the, the World Juniors team. So I, I did that and broke. I hit the standard of my first race. And then my very, my second race, I broke our national record, junior national record. And then I went to World Juniors, broke the record again. And then ever since then, I was recruited for the 400 hurdles, actually. But once I got to college, I was better at the one. T- I was getting better at the one tens than the fours, like faster. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just kind of stuck with the one tens after that. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. So earlier off the scenes, mm-hmm. besides track, you said that you played cricket and yeah. and and soccer going soccer, up. Yeah. Uh, what do you still watch both of those regularly? No, nah, you don't even pay attention to them. Nah, I haven't. Like, I, y'all start, I start watching soccer, man. <laughs> mid teens, low teens, maybe. I just maybe probably mid teens. I just started getting into soccer because of them, because they're big soccer guys. Mm. Um, so like, I'm, I don't understand the sport like a lot like that. Like, I'll ask them questions when we're watching the game because we just got a soccer team. Yeah. Um, and have you been to a game? No, nah, I haven't. They're dope. You yeah, should you should check yeah. it out. They're dope. It's yeah. fun. It's fun. Um, and I, I will watch because today, like, Chelsea and uh, Real played. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I watched the game while I was at work. So now I'm, like, starting to watch the games and understand a little bit more. And that mm-hmm. has been fun. It's been cool. It's been dope. Yeah. And, like, growing up, did you have, a, like, a, a player Premier League team or just a, oh, a team in general? Oh, Brazil. Brazil. Well, when, it go, when it comes to, like, the World Cup, uh, <laughs> Brazil. Like, everybody. Because uh, around that time, it was still Ronaldo. Uh, Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, back then, how can you not root for them? You know yeah. But I'm getting those, those guys are just so skillful, you know. Um, so, back then, uh, I'll say, as far as countries, uh, Brazil. Um, uh, I really didn't have a club team because my mom, she worked at a hotel at the time. And all the guests would bring, like, T-shirts. I have, like, a Liverpool uh, shirt. I have, like, a, a Tottenham. Mm-hmm. Um and what else? I think I had a Chelsea as well. So mm-hmm. I was just like rocking, rocking the everything. Yeah. yeah. I just like, so I really had a team back then. I just, just knew players. S- same thing with football. Like I don't have a football team per se. I just like to watch some, some players. I was going to ask you about that. How was it watching your first football game? Oh, uh, it was, I didn't know what was going on. No. I was sitting there just like, they were just cheering. I was like, uh, now so, I guess l- looking back at it now, like, yeah. If you understand, like, if you understood it then, yeah. like how you do now, do you think you would have, like, do you like football? I do. Love yeah? football. Yeah? Love football. You think you would have, like, been more excited about it? Hell yeah. Yeah. I actually wish that we played football back yeah, then. Yeah, I was going to ask, play. like, would you have wanted to play? Hell yeah. 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 Definitely. Like, just, just watching it, like, I'm just like, this This is a, a, a cool sport, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wish I could play. Yeah. What position yeah. do you think you could have played? Ah, <sighs> Man. I ain't trying to get hit, so probably corner or safety or something like that. I ain't trying to get hit hard. That's, that's what I'm he trying played. to get a hitter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what he, saying? He, so, he, he played corner. Yeah, yeah played something corner. like that. Yeah, yeah, I think something like that. And, like, I don't know. Our receiver is cool, but, I don't, uh, yeah, probably corner. Yeah. 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 So, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the weird ones. I was opposite. I liked getting hit. Oh, no. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like Different. It just, <laughs> <laughs> it, like... Mo- like it, I don't want to say motivated, like but like it just turned first, me up. Yeah, it's like, that first hit when you yeah, get, when you you get first, that first yeah, hit. Yeah, that first hit, like it got me going. It turned me yeah. up. Like, All right, let's go. Yeah, and Wake then like that, that's that's what it was. That's what yeah. I liked. That's that's what I like doing. Um, yeah. So and that, like I, I played a receiver when I played, and then um, after my sophomore year, that's when I played baseball. Mm. I heard I heard once you get to a certain point, you know how to get hit and like not yeah, to, like, brace for it. Mm-hmm. I think for me, like going out there fresh. Probably get my likes knocked out, but uh, <laughs> I hear like the more you play, it, the easier it gets yeah. to you know take some. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you just you kind of just get used. You to just it. get used to. You just know what like, it feels yeah. like. Sometimes yeah. you do like at least if you play offense, you just you do get set up sometimes mm. and get rocks. But mm. it's just have you guys ever been rocked? I I I got rocked in college on like a block though. But I was play I played defense, so like. 
they threw it down like a pass. Um, it was my sophomore year. They threw like a pass down the field, like a fade or something like that. Yeah. Caught on the other side of the field, and I was coming up running. I totally forgot about the receiver I was covering. And he, the, the, the dude, like, was reversing field. So I, like, yeah. turn around. As soon as I turn around, helmet right here. Had that. Honestly, the air was I didn't I didn't recover until after the game. Like I still was playing, yeah. but like the air was knocked out of me, and it was just, it was hard after yeah. the whole game. And I had to like play, took a series off, and they tried to put me back in. And I was like, I still can't breathe. Right. <laughs> like so, it's like yeah. the adrenaline that kind of keeps you kind of kind of going. Yeah, I bad. got rocked once. So since since I'm short, like it was just it was hard to take me down just because I was short and I just had my legs have always been strong. So there was one time I was playing, I like two dudes trying to tackle me, and the third one just came in and just laid me out. Yeah. And I just like I was, I looked up, like I was on the phone, I looked up, and I just saw white spots. I was like, God damn, oh, this no. shit hurt. Jeez, and then, I, football, I yeah, and then I got up and I was like, Whew. I mean, I I still played. I mean, probably shouldn't have, but I still like I, I got up, went to the next play and whatnot. But like yeah. that was like the only time I got rocked was like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it is different in Colorado though. If you ran in Colorado. No, so they. The, the, I've been to Denver, but no, yeah, no, no, altitude purpose. is crazy. Yeah, the, yeah, because yeah, when I went to go visit him, he lived his apartment. Well, he wasn't staying at the apartment yet, but we went to one of his friends' apartment, mm-hmm. and there's the mountains literally right there. Right. I mean, we they they had to do a little project for whatever, and we had yeah. to walk up the mountain a little bit. And I was already tired. I was like, dude, this yeah. this is crazy. Yeah, because yeah, y'all the highest elevation, right? We're like in Durango. We're like pretty high. We're like six thousand six hundred something feet. But the highest is uh, the school we played called Western, mm-hmm. where uh, you've been watching football. You know Austin Eckler who plays for the Chargers, mm-hmm. running back. I played against him in college, and that's the school he went to. They're like okay. at oh, a little over seven thousand okay. highest field in the world, like wow. elevation wise. I just I yeah. just imagine training there and just coming down and just being nothing. That is that's what was crazy. Like being there all year and then coming back for the summer. Like I would just go run, ride bikes. I would not be tired because I would just have the lungs for it. It was nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, okay. yeah, I've heard a lot of like distance runners uh, go out to Colorado mm-hmm. and just get, get some uh, mileage in and just just be sick. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Last, crazy. last, last few things for me. Mm-hmm. Top three American things you like. As far as like what is that? It's everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. it could be three different foods. It could be oh, football. Could be one of them. Like That's tough. three. Uh, Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's definitely one. Like, even back home, that's the, the kind of music I listen to, you know. Growing up, was that the music? Yeah. See, that's crazy to think about to me like that. Yeah. Like, it stretches out. Like, yeah. it, uh, well, I meant to ask you earlier, growing up, mm-hmm. did y'all have regular season football games out there, or was it just Super Bowl games? Uh, It's on TV, but, like, a lot of, like, we didn't know what was going on, so we yeah. didn't really watch it like that. Even yeah. regular season games? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy, yeah. bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did. We did. Um, but I just didn't watch it. Even the we had the game on uh, Super Nintendo, and I played it, but we didn't know what the fuck was going. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> no, you're good. Nah, nah, no, you're good. Like we, we, we cuss all, all the time. time. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we didn't know what was going on, but we just kind of playing the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but uh, I'll say uh, hip hop, man, because from a young age, like my grandma, she's like, "Are you watching BET? Turn BET off." You know what I'm saying? Like I was like, "Yeah, had BET out like, there." Yeah, watching like one season <laughs> part. That's like, that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, all, all really that, crazy. you know, um, I was just on it. You know, they had uh, Tigger, Big Tigger in the basement, mm-hmm. Cedar's World, like Hits on the Street, like all that. That was I was watching that. Don't get me wrong, like I was listening to, to our, the music we played back home and whatnot, but I was just like, fascinated by, 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 by the culture um, and just like the dressing swag. Like, yeah, um, like, all that um, I was I was big. So I'll say that's number one. Um, um, number two. Man, I'll say football because I, I really became a big football fan. Like every Sunday, I'm watching like a few games. Like I even play fantasy, like mm. all that kind of stuff. So I, I really like take like a uh, liking to football. And you you don't uh, watch college football? I do. Actually, yeah. I started with college football first. It, it's uh, and then um, that's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. It's so like, alive. Um, and then when I got to the when I started watching the pros, I was like, yeah, this this. Yeah. Uh, I play Madden. Play. I played college football when it was on PS. You know, play Madden. Um, so I'll say that's my my number two. Um, damn, it's just so much. Um, three. 
No foods? I mean, all the foods. I mean, the foods are good, you know. Yeah. No, hands down, like. Um, but for three, I would say. I don't know, just traveling to other cities and just seeing how how, how different they are. Uh, it's just so, like, on the island, you, you pretty much know what you're going to get on the island. Like, everything's mm-hmm. pretty much, like, the same. Uh, you might hear a little different, better accents, like, if you're from the north to the south. You know what I'm saying? Just, like, little things they say. Um, but the U.S. is a little different. You, like I said, move from, I went to New York a lot of times and go to Arizona. It's a desert. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. From, from city, you know what I'm saying? A concrete jungle to, to a desert. Yeah. Uh, to Texas, like, I tra- I went to school in Lubbock. It took me nine hours to ride from Lubbock to Houston. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, just that is just, like, crazy to me. Uh, Barbados, you drive from one part of the island to the other part in, like, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that's the dope part. I, th- I think, like, that part of the U.S., just, it's just every state, you get something different. You like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I'll say that's my top three. Yeah, that's maybe four. I'm a, I'm a big sneakerhead, but I guess that's globally. Too. That's global. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. here is just easier, I guess. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. uh, yeah. it's cheaper, but it's it still is. hard to yeah. get yeah. shoes. It's ridiculous, yeah. really. It's crazy, yeah. really. Yeah. And then <laughs> uh, the last question for me is two part question. Yeah. Who are your top three favorite artists, and what do you listen to before races? Good question. Damn, that's hard. <laughs> top three? Yeah. Can we go by like? like we can go by whatever you want. All right. Oh, man. This last decade, I'll say Kendrick Cole Drake. Three. Three. That's my three. Yeah, that's not three. No Rihanna? No. <laughs> no, she, no Rihanna got good music, but like. She ain't dropped like, in a while, too. Yeah, yeah. It's been a few years for her. Um, but yeah, as far as like that kind of music to, to warm up to, like probably those three. All time, yes, yeah, I, I can't, I can't do that. Nah. That's too hard. Being in Houston, Travis didn't grow, up, grow on you to like, nah, nah. nah. He, no, he cool. Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. I listen to some of the music, but as far as like when I when I start rating who's top, top of the top, nah, he's not gonna be that list. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I mean, that's pretty much my list. Yeah. Like, if I were to rank like the top three people, yeah, it would be yeah. those three. And then who do you listen to before meets? What do you listen to before meets? Uh, combination. Um, like those three. Uh, I was on my playlist. Kanye's on my playlist. Um, uh, Lil Wayne. Lil Weezy on, on my playlist. Um, Big Crit. A lot of people on my playlist. Wow. Big Crit. I like Big Crit a lot. Yeah, One of my favorite artists. Yeah. Yeah. Big Crit is dope. He's yeah, cool. Yeah. But um, Big Crit. Uh, maybe a little bit of Big Sean. Um, Isaiah Rashad. He's been kind of. Yeah. Popping for me recently. Um, who else? It's just it's just random, man. Like something I could throw in some old songs, like Outcast. You know what I'm saying? Like some old some old stuff. Uh, so yeah, my playlist is just just all over the place. I'll say. Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah. You have. Nah. Nah. No. Yeah. You have anything for us? Nah, man. Any questions for us? I appreciate this, man. My I appreciate you. Yeah, no, no. I appreciate you for dope. coming on. Yeah, it's dope, dope, man. It's yeah. dope. And then after after this next Olympics or after this. Get you back on. Yeah, yeah. get you back on. Yeah. Talk yeah. about it. See how, see how it went. Yeah, we'll man. for sure be watching. I'll be cheering yeah. for Barbados. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I'll be yeah. posting too. So, uh, oh, yeah. You know, keep a lookout. And then. Yeah. Um, we'll have Sunday tickets. So if you want to kick it with us, come watch some football. And we'll, yeah, we'll be here. Because we. Uh, me, bo- both of us personally, we would much rather like be here and watch football than like right. go to a game. Yeah. Like the only time I go to like a Texas game is like if it's a, a like big game, game. Like the like the, game the, the, the Texas oh, LSU right. when they came and this year they play in Alabama, like right. stuff like that. I'll go to, but mm-hmm. typically I like to stay here right. and watch the game just because there's just so many other games on. So that much good just, football on. Yeah, right. that you yeah, you don't want to miss. Like you got sure. uh, Ohio State always playing at. Uh, Big noon, then big noon, yeah. yeah. Then like, uh, yeah. I mean, you got so many so games, many games going on. on. So, yeah, that's uh, we we like to watch it here. I'm a Cowboy fan, so like, oh. I'd rather, yeah, I know, <laughs> I'd rather be here and then like watch the game, so I could watch like other NFL games and be nah, at the stadium. But yeah, only only UT game I'll go to is UT and Tech. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's where my brother is at actually right oh, you're now. Going to tech? Yeah, he goes okay. to Tech. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Tech got some nice facilities now. Yeah, it's nice up there. Yeah, like people <laughs> yeah. think Lubbock. It's it's really really nice. I like it's one of my like I would go there. I like it. It's cool. Wait, Lubbock is nice. Or the, the like campus is nice. the campus. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like, everything <laughs> everything's bo- everything's there. Yeah, now you're right. Yeah, you're right about The campus that. is really nice. Yeah, but Lubbock yeah. itself is a little. You just beat us in baseball. Yeah, a little, yeah. Different. A little different. 
<laughs> but yeah, we we have been good in baseball and basketball. Right? Everything. Well, yeah, we not besides football, football, but yeah, besides, everything. Yeah, yeah y'all, yeah. y'all, y'all, y'all yeah. Have come up. Yeah, we definitely, uh, definitely been on it. Recently. The one of the girls he went to school with. Um, yeah, Vivian. She, Vivian uh, Gray. She played at uh, Tech the last two, two, two. Well, really three years, but mm-hmm. two full seasons. Mm-hmm. I played basketball with her at Fort Lewis, and okay. then uh, you didn't play basketball with her. Well, Fort I Lewis. didn't play basketball. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> she played basketball at Fort Lewis, and then right. she transferred after her fr- freshman year, and then went to Oklahoma State for a couple of years, and then mm-hmm. transferred from there to Tech. But mm-hmm. that's the one I'm trying to get on the pod soon too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. all American. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I appreciate you guys, yeah. man. Thanks yeah, I appreciate you for, for coming on. And uh, I know um, it's, it's a little late and you, you got to get going. Got a big yeah, race. Go, good luck for the race. Yeah, uh, I don't, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully do good. Is it on TV or anything? Do you all air those or anything? Uh, or is there anything where we can watch it? Anywhere yeah, we can watch it? Might. I know there's just like a live results thing. Um, do you have that show like on ESPN? Because you know like ESPN Plus shows all kinds of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I think um, it might be on NBC Sport. Honestly, hold up. That would make sense. Um, I can find out, but I think it might be on NBC Sport, Sport Network. Okay, it might be on that, and yeah. it's on on Saturday, and it starts at one twenty p.m. So five twenty hour time, a.m. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it's uh, I think the time difference might be like an hour, hour or two. Oh, the- it might be on Eastern time. Earlier, you were talking about the, tra- oh, the travel time to get there might be about six hours. That's what oh, yeah. so they're only Hold on, an hour you. ahead? Right That's right. crazy. It might be. Because Barbados right now is only an hour ahead. Well, Bermuda, Bermuda is like right by Florida. Yeah, it's a little. It's like right. I it's thought like it was more up. up. Yeah, it's yeah. A little higher up. Yeah. yeah. A little higher up, yeah. yeah. Barbados is only an hour ahead, too? Uh huh. Oh, That's right not now. too bad, yeah. Yeah, after the time change, we were two before, what was it? Because y'all don't do that. We're, we're one of the. We spring forward yeah, and fall yeah, so, backwards. So, oh, yeah, so spring forward we would an hour. Here soon, I think they're I they're going to stop doing it. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's whatever, yeah. I like my fall back. I feel me? I, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I like my fall back. Oh, shit, we do like the long summers, though. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that'll do it for your boys over here at Opinionated. We'll have all his uh, stuff in the description down below. Give him a follow. Go watch him at this year's Olympics. It's in um, – Four champs. Where's the uh, Olympics uh, It's coming up one? Olympics are in 24 in uh, Paris. That's going to be that's fun. That's clean. Yeah, but this year, uh, World Championship War Ch- are in, uh, Oregon. Oregon. That's going to be fun, too. Yeah. yeah um, so. But make sure to check them out. Like I said, everything will be down below. Um, give them a follow. Give them a shout. And then we'll see y'all guys next time. Peace. Peace.